Okay, so this week's lecture material and, and textbook chapter talks about typecasting, upcasting and downcasting. Okay, so it's all about casting. So what does it mean? How does it work? What are the tricks and traps? Um, you come to the right place. I want to show you exactly how it all works with some clear examples and you can uh, apply these in your own work and it'll become clear very quickly. Okay, so typecasting, a quick recap. Uh, typecasting is where you force conversion from one primitive data type to another. For example, if you try and uh, declare an integer for int k equals 20.3, that'll give you a compilation error, incompatible types. Uh, an integer can't contain a, a floating point number. Um, if you say double my double equals 20, that's perfectly okay, because the floating point numbers are all the integers and all of the values in between. So, um, and the value 20.0 would be stored inside my w, dub, in my double. Okay, so that's perfectly okay. Uh, when you want to convert a double to an integer, we could say int k equals int 20.3. That's perfectly okay. Or int my double. So what you do is you put the data type inside round brackets and then the value. Okay, so it's pretty easy. That's something you've done before. That's just a recap. Um, if you want to convert int to a double, we could say double my double equals double k. And that's converting the integer to a double. Okay, where, where k is the integer. Uh, but double is a superset of integers. It's all the integers plus all the values in between. So you don't actually need to worry about doing a conversion there. Uh, double, my double equals k, and that's perfectly okay. Okay, that's, that's a typecasting re recap. That should all be uh, familiar to everybody now. Um, so let's talk about upcasting and downcasting. That's what I really want to talk about. Let's see how they work, what the rules are, what the traps are, and so on. So upcasting and downcasting are not like casting for primitive data types. So they're not like typecasting at all. You've got to be careful and uh, keep that in mind, otherwise you'll be confused. So upcasting is where you have an object of a subclass type that's treated as an object of a superclass type. And that's done automatically by Java. And then you've got downcasting, and that's where an object of a, a superclass type is treated as an object of a subclass type. And that's got to be done manually by the programmer. Okay, so there's upcasting and downcasting. It depends on which way you're going up the hierarchy. So let's look at an example. We've got a, a little three-class hi hierarchy here. We've got animal. Uh, it's got a, a single data item called name. We've got a, a default constructor, a parameterized constructor, and the get name method. Just keeping it short and simple. Okay, then we've got a cat class, which extends animal. And the cat's got a number of lives, and um, we can take in a, a, a name for a cat when we create it, and we'll just set the number of lives to nine <laughs> when we create the cat. Um, and then we can, we've got a method there to get number of lives. So there could be other methods here which I've left out. For example, um, take a life <laughs> if a cat does something dangerous. Okay, so um, we've just got the, the bare minimum here. And then we've got dog, public class dog extends animal, so cat and dog are both extended from animal, and that's got the loudness of their bark, or the bark decibels. Okay, and we've got a dog constructor there which takes in a name and the bark decibels, and invokes the superclasses constructor, and sets the bark decibels equal to the one that's passed in, and then we've got a, bark, a get dark bark decibels method there that just returns the bark decibels. Okay, so there's a hierarchy there with the three classes. We've got um, the dog and the cat both derived from animal. And of course, in the background there, um, there's the object class always lurking behind the scenes. Okay, so that's our, our little hierarchy. Um, so let's create some objects. Animal A1 equals new animal. Cat C1 equals new cat. Dog D1 equals new dog. So I'm keeping A, C and D to mean animal, cat and dog. Uh, the animal constructor just takes a string, so I've got an unknown animal there. The cat constructor just takes a string, and I've called it Tiddles. And the number of lives is set to 9 in the constructor. And then the dog takes a string and the bark decibels. And I've just put 20 in there, so just a, a random number. And then we can invoke methods for those objects. a1.getName, c1 is a cat, so c1.getName, c1.getNumber of lives, and then d1.getName for the doggy and d one docket bark decibels and we can put all those into print line statements and display them to the screen. 
Okay, so none of the classes implement or override the two-string method. So what does this code do? System out print line A1 or B or C1 or D1. What does that do? Okay, you've got to think back to prior weeks here. And uh, we've seen it a lot in the shoots, so you should, should be familiar with this already. And the answer, of course, is that the object class's two-string method will be invoked, which will display the object's class name and the hash code for the, for the object. Okay, for example, something like that, animal ampersand and then a memory reference or a hash code and that will vary depending on when you run it and uh, and all that sort of be different every time we run the program. Okay, it's just a, a random number. Okay, so you'll see something like that on screen if you just print line A1. Okay, so upcasting. Uh, by casting you are not actually changing the object itself you are just labeling it differently. You're getting Java to treat it differently. You are associating it with another type. Okay, so keep that in mind. You're not actually changing the object itself. You're just temporarily labeling it uh, with a new type. For example, if you create a cat object and upcast it to animal, then the object doesn't stop being a cat. It's still a cat, okay, just because you upcast it. Uh, but it's treated as an animal object and its cat properties are hidden until the object is downcasted again. So the, it's, it's treated as an animal for a while until you downcast it again when it's treated as a cat again. So in Java, there's a very useful operator called the instance of operator. And it's uh, very useful for checking the type of a data item or a data object uh, at runtime. So let's see it in action. So Java provides the instance of operator so we can check an object's type and let's uh, declare a cat c2 equals new cat mitzi animal a2 equals c2 so we're doing an upcast there we don't need to put a, uh, a data type in front inside round brackets because java does the upcasting automatically for us so animal a2 equals c2 um, so animal a2 is an animal but it's temporarily labeled as a cat okay so for the time being anim uh, animal a2 will be treated as a cat in java so if A2 is instance of cat, we'd see A2 is a cat on the screen. Otherwise, we see A2 is an animal on the screen. So what would be output by that code? And I think everyone can guess the answer. We'd see A2 A2 is a cat. Okay. So A2 is then an instance of a cat once we do this upcast. Okay. Because it's pointing at or being treated as a cat or labelled as a cat temporarily until we do a downcast again, which we'll look at shortly. Okay, so that's the instance of operator. Very useful. Um, it's a good idea to use the instance of operator a lot when you're doing casting, upcasts and downcasts, just so you can make sure you're doing something sensible. Uh, instead of these two lines of code, okay, so cat c2 equals new cat and animal a2 equals c2, uh, we could do it all in one line of code. For example, animal a2 equals new cat mitzi, and that's still an upcast equivalent to those two lines of code there. Okay, so we could do a shorthand if we'd rather. Now that A2 is a cat, what would this line of code display? Print print line A2. Okay, so it's A2 is a cat, so um, the two string method in the object class will be invoked and it will output the object's class name and the hash code. And of course, this time it'll be cat followed by the hash code, which will change each time you run the program. Okay, so we'd see cat there. So A2 really is a cat. Not only is instance of saying it's a cat, back here, instance of A2 is a, is a cat, but also the, um, the, the, the two string method behind the scenes is also showing it's a cat. Okay, so A2 is a cat. So even though that's the case, Java still requires reassurance that we know what we're doing. Okay, um, we've, we've labeled an animal as a cat, but Java still wants us to reassure uh, it that we know what we're doing. So um, if you try and do this sort of thing, so A2 is a cat, so what would this, lo this line of code do? A2 dot get number of lives, what would that do? It would actually sh display a compilation error. It cannot find symbol, okay? It cannot find the get number of lives method inside the animal class, okay? So it cannot find symbol. So A2 is a cat, but it's only labeled as a cat. It's still an animal, really. Okay, so how do you get around that? How do you invoke cat classes or cat animal, uh, cat methods for the A2 object? 
okay, because it really is a cat. And the answer is with more casting to reassure Java. And here's an example here. So we put cat and A2, uh, all in round brackets, <laughs> and each in round brackets and all in round brackets, and then invoke the get number of lives method. And that just reassures Java that A2 really is a cat, and we want to invoke cat class methods. Okay, so Java just needs a bit, a bit more hand-holding when you start doing these mixed uh, casts. What you, what you can and cannot do depends on the relationships. So cat is an animal, so we can upcast cat to an animal object. That's quite okay. But animal is not a cat. The relationship's one way. Cat is an animal, but animal is not a cat. And dog is not a cat. So if we try and do any of those casts, we'll end up with a mess, compilation errors. And of course, animal, dog, and cat are all objects. Okay, so we could cast everything back to object if we wanted to as well. And don't forget that's our hierarchy for these classes that we're talking about in this example. Okay, so it all depends on your relationships. Uh, dog is an animal, cat is an animal, but animal is not a dog and animal is not a cat. So you can go up, but you can't go down. So what is downcasting? A2 is a cat, so we can use this object to create a new cat. For example, cat C3 equals cat A2. Okay, and that's that's a downcast because we're effectively reverting the um, the cat that's referred to by the A2 object back to being a proper cat. Okay, it's not just labelled as a cat, it becomes a proper cat again. And then we can invoke cat class methods for the object C3, which is our new cat. And system out print line C3 dot get number of lives, that's perfectly okay. Java's happy now because it is really a cat object we're dealing with. Okay, so that's, that's downcasting. Um, and that's basically it in a nutshell. Um, that's as simple as it gets. Okay, so um, as with everything we cover, these topics will seem complex until you get experience using them in your own work. So my advice is to practice and improve your understanding by writing lots of code to solve a wide range of problems every week. Don't fall behind. Okay, things snowball very quickly. Uh, do your background reading, textbook, internet and so on. Um, there's tutorial questions, there's the end of chapter questions in the textbook. There's uh, contact the course co coordinator if you need more help or more questions and use the course forums if you need help as well. Okay, I hope that was useful. Thanks for watching.